Hey guys, welcome to my channel. In this video, we will be seeing the activity of defining ledgers in S4 HANA Finance. Before we get into the configuration, let's briefly understand the concept of ledger in S4 HANA Finance. Now first of all, why do you need to work with so many ledgers? We need to work with so many ledgers to take care of parallel accounting. Parallel accounting means where you need to work with more than one accounting principle. So in general ledger accounting, you can perform parallel accounting by running several parallel ledgers that is general ledgers for different accounting principles. So before we go ahead and configure our ledgers, there are certain requirements that needs to be taken care of. That is, company codes are created and configured with currency, fiscal year variant and open period variant. Next, controlling area at least one is configured with currency type and fiscal year variant. The company codes are assigned to controlling area. The process flow for today's demo would be to create the ledgers we need in the transaction code fins sc underscore ledger or follow the menu path img financial accounting financial accounting global settings ledgers ledger define setting for ledgers and currency types so you are required to have a leading ledger Leading ledger 0L is delivered in the standard system and all the company codes by default are assigned to this leading ledger. Just ensure that your company codes are assigned to the leading ledger. In addition, you can create additional standard ledgers and extension ledgers. Now assign company codes to these ledgers. Make the settings for currencies, the fiscal year variant and the posting period variant. Assign accounting principles to the combination of the company code and the ledgers. Now, let's get into the activity. This is the IMG activity where we configure the ledgers which we will make use of in our business. First, let's see the leading ledger settings. 0L is a leading ledger delivered by SAP. You will have to check this box leading as there can be only one leading ledger in the entire client and that is 0L. Now, you have to choose a ledger type for whichever ledger you define here in this activity. We just saw that ledger can either be a standard ledger or an extension ledger. And leading ledger, you know, is a standard ledger. So, standard ledger is chosen here. Standard ledgers are independent ledgers. So, we don't enter anything here for the underlying ledger underlying ledger is relevant only for extension ledgers now coming here for the valuation view if you are working with parallel valuation then you select the required valuation view you use valuation views to represent different ways of viewing business transaction in a company so this can be legal valuation view or a group valuation view from from a group perspective or a profit center valuation view from a profit center perspective legal valuation is at the company code level next manual postings not allowed 
this setting is relevant only to extension lectures so we just saw 0l is a leading ledger and it's a standard ledger you have to put a tick here for leading ledger so that is the settings you will have for the leading ledger now let's see for the non leading ledger now let's configure a non leading ledger which is a standard ledger and a non leading ledger which is an extension ledger so we will be uh, seeing the activity of configuring two ledgers for two different purposes you will have to click here on this new entries let me take any naming convention say this is for income tax reporting okay this is a non leading ledger this is non leading ledger for income tax purposes okay and this is a non leading ledger and i want to keep this as a standard ledger so the ledger type there are two types i showed you standard ledger and extension ledger this is a stand standard ledger so i will leave it as is and if it is an extension ledger then only i need to make an entry here choose a uh, choose an option from here i am not going to choose that because this is a standard ledger and coming scrolling to your right there is no need of an underlying ledger because a standard ledger is an independent ledger and this one i will make use of for you can choose among these views i don't want to choose any views because this is for my low reporting and i will be making use of my company code currency for this reporting so i will not go ahead to do uh, to choose any of these options so because these are actually meant for transfer prices that is a, that is a different concept by itself okay so uh, i will not make any choice here and there is no need to disallow manual postings because manually i i uh, my intention is to do certain postings manually to this ledger so i am not going to choose this so that's it you can now save there is a save button here you can see this right hand side corner lower corner there is a save button click on the save button and remember this is not a leading ledger right i told you there can be only one leading ledger in the client so i am not going to choose this now save so there is an entry that already exists so let's make use of save let's see if this key exist yeah it's allowing me to save there are certain information messages or warning messages you can overrule it saying okay and if there is a prompt for customizing request you can either create your own request clicking on this or if you already have a customizing request you can say okay and continue so you get information ledger group it is created only with ledger it whenever you create a ledger sap automatically in the background creates a ledger group for that individual ledger so this is an individual ledger right it is an individual ledger in the background it has also created a ledger group with it so this message says there is a ledger group it that is created and it has only one ledger called it okay so say continue it's now created okay so it is created now i would want to create one more ledger 
for my managerial reporting and i want that ledger extension ledger so let's see how we create that we are already on this new entries screen so i would like to create one for the managerial reporting so let me see if man mr key exists or not i'm not sure but i want this for managerial reporting so let the key be mr let me put here as extension ledger extension ledger for managerial reporting so what i need to do next if my activity is to create an extension ledger i have to choose the appropriate ledger type so in this case i have to choose extension ledger okay and if your ledger is an extension ledger additionally you have to make this setting saying this extension ledger is used for which of the following purposes you have got this purpose of extension ledger keeping it as an extension ledger for adjustment postings or you can have a simulation ledger simulation as the name suggests you can have some statistical values calculated which will hit only this ledger so it it doesn't matter if you are doing a simulation in this ledger it's not going to affect your main ledgers right that is the intention of having an extension ledger so you can create a ledger where you will do some simulation simulation is usually to do with some imaginary uh, figures values okay so we we do that and anticipating say for example you anticipate a sales or a sales uh, uh, order uh, so you anticipate uh, you anticipate an uh, sales revenue which is still not happened but there is a customer agreement and the customer has agreed to buy your product so there is an anticipation of a revenue that could generate right so such values you can enter here and see the uh, profit and loss situation so you can uh, draw certain reports using this extension ledger in anticipation of some future sales so you can that can be a simulation ledger or prediction and commitment you can do some analysis managerial uh, analysis for analytic purpose you can use Uh, an extension ledger by uh, having it uh, classified as prediction and commitment extension ledger type here commitment prediction and commitment is commitment is when you undertake to buy something okay there is a purchase order which is posted so that's uh, that's something you are undertaking to legally you are undertaking to pay to your vendor right that is a commitment however in fi we didn't have the concept of capturing commitments only in co you you could collect the data for commitment if at all and at the controlling area level you have activated commitment management right so here now you know co is in the fold of fi that is all the ceo tables are now sitting in uh, one uh, one single table that is ac doc a and you know uh, cost elements are now gl accounts so all ceo transactions ceo line items are going to sit in fi tables that is a table that is ac doc a now we ne also need to capture certain ceo transactions right there are certain ceo transactions previously was unique only to ceo it had no impact or it ha it had no influence on uh, fi postings however now since ceo is has come within fi perspective you have to add you have to create a uh, unique ledger and have to have it classified as prediction and commitments and allow the commitments also to be captured so if you have active if you had activated commitment management earlier when fi and co were separate modules 
you could now create an extension ledger and still capture the commitment values by choosing this option extension ledger type for prediction and commitments then there is this option of valuation where you can from a man managerial uh, perspective from uh, you can do certain valuations cost accounting related valuations in a particular uh, extension ledger and uh, have that uh, previously configured as an extension ledger type for valuation so that's the reason there are so many options given here for extension ledger type as of now i will just have it as extension ledger and here i would like to have underlying ledger as it Wh whichever ledger i have got uh, i just to define as a non leading ledger and a standard ledger i will have this it here so i as i told you earlier underlying ledger is to be maintained for those ledger that is classified as extension ledger that is an extension ledger should always have a base ledger that is called an underlying ledger and that base ledger should be a standard ledger the idea is whichever transactions are posted in this base ledger or underlying ledger is is inherited into this extension ledger additionally as i just told you if you have to do some postings specific to this extension ledger like a simulation posting or a prediction and commitment posting or a valuation posting that sits only in this extension ledger it need not have to go and hit anywhere so it's it's a sort of one one way traffic where from a base ledger or underlying ledger the transaction flows down to the extension ledger however whatever transaction entered in extension ledger remains there and it does not flows up to the or flows down or flows across to any other ledger so whatever entry specifically you make into an extension ledger remains there additionally you have the entries which is uh, already posted into that base ledger that is the underlying ledger so it is convenient for for uh, extracting reports because uh, 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 just to, uh, take an example if your manager wants to see the reports of the transactions that you have made for income tax valuation or income tax purpose you made some transactions and it is for your local reporting it is sitting in this ledger along with the some simulation you have done in this um ex extension ledger together if your manager wants to see the report means factual figures are sitting in this standard ledger and simulations are sitting in this extension ledger together if i am interested to see a report i can extract a report using this extension ledger mr because by default the postings made in this underlying ledger is captured in this extension ledger additionally extension ledger can have its own entries together you can draw a report or extract a report which has the figures of both the ledgers that way you need not have to disturb this ledger for extracting reports because the uh, the transactions are sitting now here in this ledger as well so it's it makes sense to use this ledger for reporting okay so that is the functionality of having an extension ledger and these things i am not going to make any settings there so i will save the system will check if this ledger with this key already exists if it doesn't exist it will allow me to save let's save it again the same message ledger group mr is created only with ledger mr which means when i created this ledger mr 
system in the background also creates a ledger group with the same mr and that ledger group has as of now has only one ledger so in the standard system whenever a ledger is created a ledger group also is created in the background with the same name that is with the same key so let's say continue yeah so we just have created two ledgers the leading ledger is something which is delivered by sap right i told you 0l is a leading ledger and any number of non leading ledgers you can define non leading ledgers can be extension ledger or standard ledger or extension ledger so i uh, demonstrated creation of two non leading ledger one is a standard non leading ledger and another one is a extension ledger we just saw the demo hope this is clear now let's go to the next activity company code settings for the ledger so we are done with the ledger configuration in this activity in this folder ledger when you expand it you go here and configure the ledgers you want to work with 0l is delivered in the standard system we have created one standard ledger and one extension ledger additionally so now we will see for each of the ledger what settings you make per company code now for the leading ledger let's see what are the settings that is available per company code so just to choose a ledger double click on company code settings for the ledger and you will be brought to this screen now here you are seeing there is company code and local currency and global currency type these are grayed out right why are these grayed out because for the leading ledger all the company codes that are created in this client are automatically assigned to leading ledger you need not have to come here and do an explicit assignment of your company code to the leading ledger the moment you are you have created a company code and saved the company code immediately internally it gets assigned to the leading ledger that is the reason this is grayed out here next this local currency type is copied from the company code currency company code currency is a local currency that has come here and this global currency type is a currency that is assigned to the controlling area to which your company code is assigned so this is a company code currency local currency type is the company code currency and global currency type is a controlling area currency so for the leading ledger company code local currency type and global currency type will be grayed out because by default it is assigned to the ledger 0l your company code is assigned to ledger 0l and from the company code and controlling area combination these two currencies are defaulted now what additionally you could do here in this activity is define up to define and store up to additional eight currencies these are freely definable currencies you can store up to eight currencies so additionally what we can do here for our company code is define and save up to eight freely definable currencies so this feature was not there in ecc right this is a new feature that is made available in s4 hana finance you can store up to eight additional currencies for your company code okay additionally you can enter the fiscal year variant and posting period variant leading ledger will work with the fiscal year variant and posting period variant assigned to your company code okay so and again there is uh, you know the prerequisite suppose your company has got some four or five company codes 
all the four or five company codes are by default assigned to leading lecture 0L because 0L is a group lecture. So all the five company codes are automatically assigned to leading lecture. We know that. And if all your company codes are assigned to leading lecture 0L, then it goes without saying that all the five company codes must work with the same fiscal year variant and same posting period variant for the leading lecture. When we are making settings for the company code for the leading lecture, this fiscal year variant and posting period variant must be the same for all the company codes that are assigned to the leading lecture for that particular company. Next, what is this parallel GL accounts? What, what happens? You put a tick here. In uh, S4 HANA Finance, SAP allows you to carry on your financial accounting using ledger approach or accounts approach. So you are creating ledgers here. We are creating ledgers here because we want to work with ledger approach. And you can you create ledgers. You want to take advantage of having a ledger. So I created ledger, but I want to work with accounts approach. Ledgers are still allowed. Ledger is something which you can, you have to create, right? To store your specific settings. So you create ledgers. However, I create ledgers, but I don't want to follow ledger approach. I want to follow accounts approach. Then you have to put a tick here. The moment you put a tick here, it means you are following the accounts approach and you take care of parallel accounting using GL accounts and not using ledgers. And what you're seeing here is first currency, second, second currency and third currency is these are the currencies from BSEC. BSEC is the table, line item table. In case of a, a migration project where you still have data in uh, BSEC and uh, you have recently moved to S4 HANA Finance. If you Then if you still need to see what was your currency that was maintained in BSEC, you can see it here. You can enter it here. In uh, ECC, we, we were having three currencies, right? For the company code, you can have local currency and additionally two parallel currencies. So in uh, ECC, we were working with three currencies. Those currencies also you can update here for your company code. Let's see the settings for the non-leading lectures. We created two non-leading lectures, right? We will see for that. So we saw the company code settings for the leading lecture, right? Now, for our non-leading lectures, we have this non-leading lectures for our local reporting, right? So for a uh, company code in India, this non-leading ledger will follow the fiscal year pattern of April to March. And to work in synchronization with this fiscal year variant, we have defined a separate posting period variant. So we will see how we will be assigning a different fiscal year variant and a different posting period variant for the same company code, but for a different ledger that is a non-leading ledger. So in our example, we have created a ledger call, called IT for income tax purposes. This is our non-leading ledger, right? So choose that and click on this company code settings for the ledger, okay? So we have come here to this screen. Since this is a new ledger we have just created, there are no settings here. So we have to make the settings work. So click on new entries. First of all, what we are doing is there is a ledger IT which you have created to use in your company. Code. So first you have to assign that ledger to your company code and make the other settings. So first go to new entries. First you have to assign it to work for your company code. So in my example, the company code is VJ01, right? 
I enter VK01. Now you are seeing here, I can choose a different fiscal year variant and a different posting period variant from that of which I have chosen for my leading ledger. For my leading ledger, I have chosen calendar year. So here for my local reporting, I can choose a non-calendar year or whatever the case is. Condition is you should have created that fiscal year variant, right? I have created a fiscal year variant, which is the non-calendar year for my company code. Just scroll down to see. So this is the non-calendar year fiscal year variant I have created for my company code VK01. Choose that. Same way, you can choose a posting period variant that works in synchronization with your fiscal year variant. So this is my posting period variant I have defined for my company code for my non-leading ledger. Okay, posting period variant for non-leading ledger. Additionally, again, I can, I have the choice for having this ledger managed using accounts approach. So if I am going to manage this ledger using accounts approach, I have to put a tick here and here my parallel accounting happens via GL accounts and not via the ledgers. Anyways, here I want my ledger to be taking care of the parallel accounting, so I'm not going to make a tick here. Click on save and this way you can maintain your non-leading ledger for your company code with a different fiscal year variant and a posting period variant. Follow the same instructions for your extension ledger. Now we have configured our ledgers and made the necessary settings for the company code. Now we have to, in our next step, assign accounting principles for the combination of the ledger and the company code. Let's begin with leading ledger and the company code. So once you choose this leading ledger and click on this accounting principle, it will ask you to enter a company code. Okay, here we have to enter the company code. And now make a fresh entry for assigning an accounting principle for the combination of the leading ledger and the company code. Go to new entries and choose the accounting principle. So for the leading ledger, I want to assign the group accounting principle, which is US GAAP. So first of all, you should have defined this accounting principle. So this is my accounting principle, which I have defined for my group reporting. So for the leading ledger, you always have to assign the group accounting principle. This is for my group reporting. Choose that and save. Okay, now come back and make the settings for your non-leading features. So IT is my standard non-leading ledger for a combination, for the combination of this non-leading ledger and the company code, I need to assign an accounting principle. So this is my non-leading ledger. This is my company code. Assign an accounting principle. Same instructions. Click on new entries and choose the accounting principle. Click enter and save. For this, I am for my local reporting for India, I have created Indian accounting standards. This one I have created ICAP that is for India generally accepted principles. So I have chosen this. Click on enter and see.
okay data is saved for your non leading ledger it same way we can maintain a different accounting principle for the extension ledger as well our extension ledger is mr choose mr click on this accounting principle enter the company code press enter click on new entries and choose the accounting principle if at all you have a separate account you wish to have a separate accounting principle for your extension ledger you can do so so i have created this ias1 this is specifically for my cost accounting ledger choose this press enter and save so with this we have completed our activities of defining ledger making company code specific settings for the ledgers and assigning accounting principle for the combination of ledger and company code coming up next in the series would be configuring currencies for your ledgers stay tuned in hope you like this video if yes please give it a big thumbs up if you would like to see more such interesting videos please comment below and for those who are new to my channel please consider subscribing to my channel where i post such educative videos on sap thanks for watching